and we're live hey welcome to youtube welcome everybody how's it going rob austin and carla how are you all doing tonight good, good how are you good, good, good. great this yeah. is uh we're back and we are back and uh, we renamed the show let's discuss and tonight we're going to discuss simulation theory and why are we going to discuss that is because in the 1990s was it 1990s the matrix came out and i kind of put this little like bug in the back of my ears as huh what if this was true and now you have elon musk and you have neil degrassi and everybody else talking about it so let's talk Rob, what is your take on simulation theory? We'll do like a quick round table, find out what everybody thinks. Uh, when Elon Musk came on Joe Rogan a couple years ago and basically said that the probability is higher, that there's a simulation actually going on, then it's impractical of it being a simulation. I immediately was like, okay, well, this is a really smart dude. So I, I think it's, it's possible. That's my thoughts. Awesome. What do you think, buddy? I mean, I definitely think it's possible, especially with the advances in the just how far we've gone in technology. I mean, you compare like 10 years ago to, to today, I definitely think it's possible that we could be in a, some form of simulation. Um, Carla, do we have anybody that doesn't think that we're in a simulation? Um, Maybe I, I was going to say. <laughs> I don't think so, to be honest, but that could just be because if I don't have any evidence, then I just don't believe in it. Right. Um, but, you know, yeah, I also heard it from Elon Musk and I thought it would be interesting to look into it. And that's why we're here. Well, that's the thing about Elon Musk. He seems to be like this voice of the generation because, you know, we're probably about what three what, 30s, 20s, 40s here. So, I mean, we got three different generations almost. So uh, maybe it is something. Maybe we do need evidence-based stuff. And now that we're seeing that, you know, uh, his biggest thing is always, you know, look, back in the 1970s, all we had was Pong. And there was two square boxes. Now we have this massive gaming platforms. We're doing virtual reality is like real. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, man. What do you all think about that? I mean, virtual reality has become big in just the past couple of years. I mean, because they they weren't real. They've been trying to get it off the ground. I mean, we had virtual reality for a long time, yeah. but it's never become mainstream until the past couple of years. Yeah, if you look at like Oculus or Oculus, I have one right next to me. And what is that like? Is it like it's, do you it's feel so like much fun? There? It is, especially if you put like headphones on, you can just get lost in it. And they have hand tracking now, so you can like just use your hands for everything and i uh i don't i can't get over the vr man like i went to the army museum a few weeks ago yeah and i brought my kids actually it's probably about two weeks ago brought the kids and we're like literally defending a bunker against like aliens or something like that and it feels like you're there you have to oh, yeah. duck you have to move all i have to do is like spray a little water on me and i'll be like hey this is like 4d immersion right well i mean you look at the, the theaters the, like the 4D theaters where the chairs move and, you know, you get rain and wind and everything while you're watching the movie. And it's it's just crazy. Yeah, there there's even um places in California that do like mm -hmm. 3D. Uh, it's kind of like more like 4D warehouses where you can go hunt yeah. like zombies or you can actually go and have like wars and they'll have the the room set up where you can actually like walk around and then the room is it's a standard room but you know you're seeing it through whatever they designed it as so it's just fully immersed basically and um i don't know exactly what they're called but they're there's a yeah, couple of them i know you're talking about in. though yeah yeah that kind of makes me think um you know because elon musk always brings these things up if these um like virtual realities are then linked with narrow link if it gets to mm -hmm. that point, you know like right. even like uploading our consciousness or something someday um it, it's possible maybe like 50 years out though yeah and what's really uh, interesting is watching a 3d movie in vr yeah is really crazy to watch 
Well, one thing, you know, what let's... What type of movies are you watching over there, Austin? Three hey, whoa. Teenage Mutant Ninja <laughs> Turtles, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is not our podcast. Okay. Well, about... yeah, exactly. Come on, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> let's take a look at this. Fully immersed. <laughs> We're talking, and when you, when because you, you guys brought up immersed, let's talk about a little Matrix. Matrix. And this is an excellent scene, man, because this is basically what it's going to be like. When do we this, think this technology is going to come out? Let's talk about that in a minute. Let's watch. It's Maybe we can't handle the truth. Maybe that is our world today. Maybe we've been living in a simulation and it just goes on repetitive cycle. So, so um, Rogan's got an interesting theory on this and he says, how do we not know that every day that we wake up, that our dreams and our previous life experiences, how do we know that that's even real? And how do we know that potentially us waking up today isn't like the start of the simulation and then all that information of your past has just been implanted into your brain? I mean, because they, they talk about like, what if you know your dreams are the reality and then your reality is a simulation yeah, i've heard that as well huh. it's very I, true i i find it hard to grasp that I, I know i said at the beginning that elon musk said it so i kind of believe it i believe it in the essence of he seems insanely intelligent and just the the probability factor but it it's kind of hard to concept as a reality just because I, I feel like that would take away almost free will and mm -hmm. your ability to to do things and i know like right now if i want to set down my headphones and walk away from this, this podcast <laughs> but, i mean that's probably not the best move but <laughs> but i don't feel like some from it though so like yeah me are too your thoughts are, are you that's that's where that's I, my I disconnect away. right there exactly what but, about you, Austin? Do you feel like you're controlled then? I mean, no, but I mean, so like I, I do believe in the whole free will thing, but how do you, my thoughts are, how do you know that free will is in a simulation? Exactly. I mean, you could be like your own. Have you guys ever played uh, Sims? Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. It's own damn thing. And then you yeah. like force Sims to interact with each other. Right. So maybe we're our own little Sims walking around doing our own thing and then our environment can be changed by and this is if the theory is true because <laughs> like i said i can literally just do this and walk away if i want to but if, if if we are actually controlled maybe it's our environment that's controlled not mm. necessarily as like you know carla austin jason are actually controlled they, f they felt like they were it was their destiny or something or you know th they just magnetically were pulled to it um who's to say that they weren't someone wasn't pushing them towards that like you said like in sims well then let's look back thousands and thousands and thousands of years you know we brought this up in the last uh, conversation too about like the pyramids um aztecs this you know the seeming technology and are you know methods of doing things that seem like really out of this world mm -hmm. maybe that was like leftover part of data on a hard drive in a simulation right you know if you really want to think about it well i mean look at people like the mayans who just disappeared you know yeah. and we don't know what happened to them they just they just vanished maybe maybe that part of the video game is over and then they just rebooted it yeah into, into like the middle ages or something and then that one ends and then they reboot it into another one so i so have having do any of you watch loki on disney uh, yeah <laughs> no okay oh, yeah. well i'm not gonna spoil it then loki okay. oh loki yeah, uh, yeah nice. yes yeah, loki yeah. Yeah. no loki on disney not woogie yeah. I thought you said Wookie. No. I thought you said Wookie. No. I was like, what the No, man? Loki on Disney. Like, have you watched the yeah. um, newest episode last yesterday? Uh-huh. I have not yet. Okay, well, I won't spoil it for you then, Rob. Yeah, how about don't spoil it for all the viewers? You know, Jason. Okay. Well, I was gonna, I, well, I was going to touch bases on the whole, the how that episode ended could be, like, similar to, like, the simulation theory. 
like the TVA, like the TVA, would you like the TVA could be, you know, what are your thoughts on the TVA, like controlling like us, like there could be a, a TVA version that we have now that we don't know about. Well, you know, what if there, I mean, that could be another conversation unto itself is like, what if we are in different timelines, mm -hmm. different time streams? Yeah. Huh. Well, yeah. what I was going to say is what if our DNA is, I mean, it is our programming, right? Um, mm -hmm. And there's this theory by, I think it was um, Carl Jung. And he was talking about how, like, for example, if one of our ancestors, let's say they were killed by a bear, right? And mm -hmm. then now you have an unreasonable fear. Right, predisposition. Right? right, so you have that because it was encoded in your DNA that was passed on by your ancestors. Like, that could be a form of um, simulation programming that we have. Supposedly right. Exist. What do you guys think about that? Like, like Rob's, you know, fear I of moths. <laughs> <laughs> I have to bring that up. I mean, that's basically what she's talking about. Started saying this, it's like, oh no! You guys, you guys all know. Um, you guys all know uh, Brewer. Yeah. Yeah, uh, red beard dude. Anyways, um, all of us follow him. He's a really cool mm -hmm. guy. He's he's been um he's actually tuned in for a couple of these live. Anyways, uh, when he was a guest on our podcast, he brought up that exact same theory. And then these two started going after me and saying that uh, you know, Rob's ancestors were killed by mobs. Or <laughs> I am terrified of mobs. Like I scream. Red beard I dude. Hey, look, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Red beard. Yeah, I'm talking about him. Yeah, we we're talking about you. Remember how we we're talking about how I was scared uh, of mobs? And yeah, so I, on a dead serious note, what Carla's saying, I think it could be one of those things that are genetically passed down but i look at it more from the genetic side than i think it's a part of the simulation because i'm still like am i disconnected from it i guess how about you guys i'm i'm a little disconnected from the simulation theory it could be real but there's this part of me that just unless unless i have facts i mean because i look around this room and i go man that's a hell of a lot of data i mean you know but I think when you go all the way, all the way, all the way back to like the prehistoric era mm -hmm. and think about how much it's changed, you know, it took billions of years to get to where we are now. But then in the past 40 years, 30 years, technology has just gone way beyond anything we could possibly imagine. Just this thing every year is getting more and more yeah. and more crazy. But is that is that the simulation or is that just alien technology? Well, if we go back to our first episodes about UFOs and UAPs, I mean, right. we don't know. And is it alien as far as we just don't know about it? Just foreign technology. Foreign technology. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. You know, and then like you said, there's so much data, but then again, look at like quantum computers. They can process millions and millions of gigabytes of data in seconds. Wait, but then we have to think about it too. Is like, when we so everybody if you, this is your first time listening to us or your third time or whatever when we talked about you know how it's becoming desensitized to talk about ufos and un, uh, unidentified aerial phenomena uaps mm -hmm. and things like that the other thing is like maybe now the, they planted these seeds like the matrix like uh all these other type of things you have elon musk you have this and that and everybody else talking about simulation that it kind of desensitizes us to it mm -hmm. so maybe when it does happen maybe we, when we do figure it out maybe that's the the end state of the simulation mm -hmm. and then and what do you one yeah and then so what are your thoughts on dreams being simulations um because you know there's dreams you have where you think you know you're they're actually happening like mm -hmm. you can even wake up and you know think that that just happened so mm -hmm. do you think that dreams could be simulations i think they're you know simulations for us we create them because right. mm -hmm. our brains are way more complex and way more we could process terabytes in milliseconds you know so, right yeah from what i understand dreams are our um our brains form of uh, processing data right um from the day um but yeah I, I do get what you mean because sometimes i have a dream 
and I wake up and it's everything's normal. I go back to sleep and that same dream continues. Mm -hmm. And it's so vivid too. So it really makes you think like, how does your brain even come up with that? Right. I mean, because some of them are just ridiculous out of left field. <laughs> You're yeah, like, why I mean, am I dreaming of this? I would even say that, um, you know, have you guys ever looked into uh, lucid dreaming? Yeah. 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 And where Jason, you know what that, that is? Mm -hmm. Where you, where you kind of control your environment in your dream because you know you're dreaming? Yeah, I love that. I, I love when I get to that point. It's like, it seems like right before you wake up. Mm hmm you kind of know that it's an yeah. dream. Yeah, I mean, it could be, it could be, I don't know. I find that a little bit harder to believe, though, that the dreams are the simulation. I would say that more, if there's a simulation, I would think that it's the whole encompassing thing. And then at nighttime, whatever the programmers would say we're going to dream about is what we're going to dream about. And it could be based on like an algorithm that's put into each sim person or whatever into what their their day consists of because that's what dreams are essentially most of them are are bits and parts of our memories and or things that have happened in our day and then they're kind of like mixed together with things that might be stressors excite us um stuff like that hmm. mm -hmm. and then have you guys seen um the Hitch hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy yeah I mean, you've never seen that the old, it's an old movie, um, but it, it's a great movie. And in there, they talk about like, if someone figures out the meaning of life, the universe and everything, that it would instantly disappear and immediately be replaced with something even more complex um, where they can't figure it out. Well, you know, it's, it's this whole simulation theory is picking up speed. I mean, when you look at all the different you know, let's take a look at this. It's showing up everywhere. Oh, yeah. You know, the Guardian. It, it's and everybody's always hate. Hey, there's Elon Musk again. And it's always because he's the he's the for he's the one who brought it to the forefront. Mm hmm. Because well, everybody knows who Elon Musk is. So yeah. when he talks about it, people listen. He's the best sim. That the yeah, he's an alien they, himself. So yeah, he's the best sim that they implanted into the game, right? The way we can learn. About, like, <laughs> it might be one of those things. Like these guys, I don't know what's go what's going on with them. That they're going to blow each them. other up with nukes, throwing help Elon them. Musk, <laughs> right? Uh, right. <clears throat> Create Elon Musk. Deploy him. <laughs> he's like your super character. Hey, uh, why don't we take a break here and let's talk about this this new podcast and YouTube. Uh, you guys are uploading the Fight Like Hell podcast on YouTube now, right? We are. We have the video version up on there um, every Monday night. So tell us about Fight Like Hell. Go ahead, Rob. Uh, so Aust um, a while back, I was attempting to do a podcast just for Save Our Six. And then I didn't necessarily want to do one by myself because I felt like I'd be talking to the ether and not talking to anyone. So Austin approached me because our companies work together and said, hey, what do you think about doing a podcast together? But not calling it Save Our Six or Vigilant and Humble. He's like, why don't we call it Fight Like Hell? And the ideology behind it is we want to have on people. Um, we've had a, a lot of guests on so far. I think we're 21 or 22 episodes in. 21. 21 episodes in probably have had like six or seven guests at least. And every single person that comes on has already fought like hell or they are fighting like hell to get to their goals. Like we had Austin, that way you're talking a little bit. Um, talk about the, the gentleman that we had on, on Monday. Cause that story was incredible. Yeah. I mean, so on Monday, Monday night we had on Tony who, who went from, over 400 pounds to losing over 170 pounds wow um and and he ran him and ran a marathon he's training for a triathlon and now he's training for a triathlon and he's you know the epitome of you know fight like hell you know because my my quote is you know when it when you know the time comes you'll have two options you can give up or you can fight like hell and there's a lot of people that choose to give up 
Well, know, we have nine subscribers now. So let's see if we can get you know a few more subscribers. If anybody out is out there right now, uh, just type in Fight Like Hell Podcast into the YouTube search bar, and you'll find them. And they're going to have a lot of great content. I mean, really good stuff. Yeah, and we had you on there as well, Jason. Well, not on yeah. YouTube, but we have you as on Apple or Spotify or, or wherever you listen to podcasts at. Well, we'll have to have you back on it. I, I had talked to Carla, too, about coming on one time. Like, Yeah, the smart one. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, everyone, if you're just tuning in for the first time, she's the she's down there right now. Wait, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> the, the smart one over there. Uh, so back to simulation theory. I think we kind of figured it out here that we may or may not be in a simulation. I I love the Matrix movies just because it is. I want I want to watch more of them because maybe this is just I'm a huge movie buff. I love I think they're someone sometime I believe in time travel in a way, kinda. I mean, do you guys believe in time travel? <laughs> I mean, that's another uh, I mean, I just want a TARDIS. What? A tart you don't know what a TARDIS is? No, I don't. I don't do you know that. who Doctor Who is? Yeah. Oh yeah, a TARDIS. Okay. It's a time traveling phone box phone booth. Oh. Mm. Did he You're use really it to tra- out. Well, I mean, I just, I like I like did he use it to travel in in between different dimensions and timelines. And and what you were saying before we started the podcast and or the video cast um Austin the Matrix is and the Matrix is coming out next year, the new one. So Yeah, I Memorial think. Day next year. Yeah. Um then also, since we're kind of like Matrix topics, I think that Ready Player One, which yeah. was oh, yeah. a topic that we had talked about, I think, last week, also correlates with this as 100%. well. hundred percent. Because that's full immersed. Uh, and I mean, 40. that's and that's definitely, I think, going to be the future of virtual reality. I mean, because we already have standalone units and haptic suits and Mm -hmm. hand tracking and everything else that we need. Um, The technology has just got to get better for like resolution and feeling your environment. But I definitely don't think we're that far away from it. I mean, look at technology in the past 10 years, how much it's grown. Just imagine the next 10 years, what we're going to have. Mm-hmm. Especially if things like Neuralink happen. Carla, you had a theory. What was that that theory you heard about? The uh, um, so another... it's in regards to um, Friedrich Nietzsche, the German philosopher. He talked about this theory called the um, eternal recurrence, and it's basically your life. It, it's going to be on infinite loop forever, right? Um, so within, like, according to the simulation theory, too, like if Imagine just your life, all the good moments, the bad moments, repeating forever, right? And I don't want that. Exactly. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, some people do. I don't know. But um, Nietzsche was referring to how that would kind of make people feel very nihilistic, like life is meaningless, or mm-hmm. like who the hell wants to live the bad moments of their life forever, right? right. So, no, my cat. Um, so, <laughs> what do you guys think about that? Like, if that is the case, how would you feel? So let's touch on that. I also want to bring up everybody's thoughts on like reincarnation Hmm. and what are your thoughts on reincarnating as something else or having previous lives, you know, because there's people out there that say, oh, well, I feel like my previous life was this and this and this. And that could also be a simulation, part of the simulation. Like you said, live forever, but it could also be in different, different you know simulations that you're living yeah but it's all one big simulation where you just every time you die you get reborn into a get put into a new simulation huh yeah i've i've heard the i've heard the theory i've actually heard both of your theories obviously reincarnation is is huge pretty huge but um carla's theory i actually heard it slightly different Okay. Um, one of the theories I heard was that we are stuck in a loop, like you were talking about, until we get life correct. Like mm-hmm. you, have to, you have to accomplish something bigger than you 
you have to be essentially a good person to pass the simulation and move on to the afterlife or whatever. But if you don't, and you're, for lack of better words, a terrible person, you end up getting rebooted back into it. And that kind of goes back to Austin's theory where he's talking about mm -hmm. reincarnation. But with that being said, you know, reincarnation is the ideology of not necessarily coming back as um, uh, sapien, but maybe as, right. um, any animal. Any animal, exactly. You know, it brings me back to my movies again. Lucifer, the TV show, oh, yeah, is like when, when they go to hell, quote unquote hell. They're they're in a loop, and they keep replaying that loop over and over and over again. So it's kind of like, and, to, and the way they can get out of it is if they like you know change it, and right. none of them ever do because that's hell. And just, and that could be another thing is you know the whole heaven and hell thing. They they could be simulations too. Right. Hmm. Because what do we? I mean, what do we? What do we really know about those places? One thing I've learned over the past twenty eight minutes is we really don't know what the hell we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and exactly. we're we're trying to figure it out. We're this trying. Is one of the harder subjects, but maybe it is. Maybe it's programmed to be that way. If the simulation theory is real, maybe kind of like just, aliens. Are they real or not? not? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I felt like we were able to dive. Deep I feel like there, there was I think like, we got a little I think we got a little bit deeper with the alien ones because we could there's more like this logical there's more evidence out there hey there's the red beard dude <laughs> <laughs> that's true our IQs like are Madden like, scores <laughs> well I mean speaking of that though in China they actually have where they're trying to like you can be able to know everything about who's around you Oh, I see. Is like it they're the trying credit score sort of thing they have. Yeah, or? yeah, something like that where they're trying to f figure out so you can know everybody around you. So for just purposes, you know. But that's China. They're trying to do weird things over there. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, and that's the other thing too. I don't trust this. And now what they're trying to not just neural link us, they're trying to like link our Amazon accounts. Like as we're walking down <laughs> the street. I mean, Amazon is everything. So yeah. Huh. But between Amazon and you know Elon Musk, the two of them you know rule the the world basically. So well, if, you, if you think about like the old school games like Age of Empires and all that, where you're like building these massive kingdoms mm -hmm. and you got to forage, it's almost like you know with this, you know your technology and technology and you're you're building and you're doing this and that. Like if we were in it, uh, whoever who's winning? Well, Rob's gone. I lost Rob. Uh, <laughs> That's a cool He'll be back. Oh, there. there he is. <laughs> that looked pretty cool. We're like, oh, the simulation to reboot it. <laughs> <laughs> the Matrix. Rob went into the Matrix. <laughs> My phone was like dying and I thought it was charging. So I've been trying to like get it back up on uh, changing the plugs and, and then it kicked me off. It was all it was all the Matrix. Was like, You're done. You've said too much. Yeah, you <laughs> said too much. That's the thing. Oh, listen, <laughs> if anybody's winning the simulation right now is Clinton. Yeah. I don't know anything about it. Nothing. <laughs> if anybody knows anything about it, mm. some people will get that. You know. Yeah. yeah. The Haitian president. Oh, oh yeah. We'll, we'll do another <laughs> deep dive into that. But I think I think we kind of kicked it on simulation theories. We really don't know if we are or not, but we could be. Or yeah, we I mean, not. I think yeah. it's a mixture of both. Mm-hmm. So what are we thinking? Everybody out there in the, the the few viewers we have, we have a comment. What do we got here? It's the red beard guy. Hey, are you the only comment? <laughs> we had we have to bring him on the show too. Good man. Put hey, him in the middle. Yes. It's a good yeah. guest. Well, everybody, well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, before we get going tonight, I do want to tell you to go to Fight Like Hell podcast on YouTube. If you're watching us for the first time, or if this is, you're watching this in, um, what is it, February of 2023, and you see this video on YouTube, <laughs> maybe these guys will have at least 1,001 subscribers by then. But maybe. please, be 1,002 subscribers. I, I think you'd be the next, you know, ninja or whatever those people are out there who are making <laughs> these, I don't know. We, oh. just, we just wanted to get to Joe Rogan status. We'll be good. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> make sure if this is your first time checking out my channel, make sure you like and subscribe to the protectors. Make sure you're following Carla on all social media platforms, primarily Instagram. Austin, Vigilant and Humble. Not only does Austin, you know, I, I got to pull up this website here because I'm, I'm pretty happy with this thing, man. It's Vigilant and Humble. You got a lot of stuff going on, man. I'm always, always working on it. Always hustling, which is good. And uh, you really, if you want to buy some gear and everything, use code. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Hold on, let's let's share that screen here. Let's let, tell us what you got going on here over in Vigilant and Humble. I mean, Oof. like I said, always working on working on it to make it better. Um, we did our Freedom re release, which is our new sh shirts there, and we have Summer and everything out. I like this. Sun's out, guns out. So, yeah, it's per perfect for summer. Uh huh. Fun the police. I've got the printer right there. I got that. Yeah, that's our the fun the police is our, was our best selling shirt from last year, just because it was so controversial. Mm hmm. If you've anybody seen my clown motel post, you'll see this memento more. Yeah, you wear that shirt all the time. I love it. I need to get a new one because I can't find it anymore. So, yes, <laughs> what you do with it? <laughs> I don't know. Stop it. Uh, um, everybody, make sure you go there and check out vigilantandhumble.com. Um, Rob, Save Our Six. What do you got going over there with the Save Our Six? Our, our Save Our Six uh, website um, has been growing and it's doing well. We just released some of our summer merch as well. Um, the nice thing about being business partners with Austin is uh, he pretty much helps me develop it from the ground up. And, you know, we're a few years behind him. He's definitely got a lot more on his, but it's coming along pretty good. And I think through Fight Like Hell, we've been able to push out both websites. Mm -hmm. And anyone that wants to go to either website, uh, we use the promo code uh, F. I always get this wrong. F L H. Thank you. Fight like hell. <laughs> like literally. <laughs> it's Come on, Rob. Uh, I have a lot of brain injuries, but yeah. So what's the code we use? F L H. Yeah, that word. Fight like hell. Fox Trap uh, Lima Hotel. That's kind of a, you know, it's, it's a lot of work for me. And Carla, <laughs> Carla is actually repping a little. Yeah, Save she's our wearing our. Too. We're both wearing Save Our. I just stuff. got him mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. How, how does it fit? Do you like it? Comfortable? You said you like the red yeah, that matches yeah. your and lipstick. And it matches my lipstick, so that's all that <laughs> Yeah. So. Protagonist for me. So, yeah. I love that one. Everybody, thank you for tuning in tonight and joining us in another couple weeks. And we'll be talking about, I don't know yet, if you have any comments or what you'd like us to talk about, just drop them down below on YouTube or hit us up on social media. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.